So hi everybody, my name's Liz and I'm from Animal Aid. I've come here today to um, do a vegetarian cookery demonstration for you and to talk a little bit more about what vegetarian people eat. So does anybody know um, what vegetarian people avoid? Yeah? Um, meat. Yeah, anything else? Fish. Fish, that's right. Anything else that vegetarians don't eat? Is it sometimes um, products from animals? Like yeah, that's right. But particularly thinking of sweets and things with gelatine in, because obviously gelatine is a byproduct of um, animals being killed, isn't it? So we'd have to read packaging and be aware of that. So the other type of vegetarian is a vegan. Does anybody know anything about what vegans avoid? Vegetables. Um, no, they do eat vegetables. Yeah, it's um, dairy products. So what sort of things are dairy products? Cheese. Cheese. Butter. Butter, milk, and also eggs. So vegans would avoid all things um, from animals. So you're probably thinking, my goodness, so what do they eat? Well, lots of things here. As you can see, we've got a real good display here of lots of convenience foods that vegans and vegetarians can eat. And to help when you're trying to look for foods in the supermarkets, there are some handy logos. So this one is the Vegetarian Society logo, and it means that's um, completely OK and safe for vegetarians to eat. There's another symbol that you might look for, and that's the Vegan Society label. And that's slightly different to the Vegetarian Society label. It's not an approved label, but it's something that um, companies can use if they register with the Vegan Society. Because obviously when you're in the supermarket, you want to know that you're picking up um, the right product, especially if you're buying something for somebody who's a vegetarian. So, looking at the different products, you can see burgers, sausages, bacon, margarines, even ice creams. So all these sorts of things, um, you know, are, are widely available in supermarkets. So this morning I'm going to make um, a vegetable chilli. Do we all like chilli? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, yeah. good. Do we like it spicy? Do we like it medium? It's got to be spicy. It's got to be spicy. Is that all right if everybody else? Yeah? yeah. Well, well, we'll sort of medium to high spicy and then we've got, we're using chilli flakes so we can always add some more spice in. Okay then. So we need a nice large pan like a wok. That's a really good size to have. And then start with an onion. So um, I'm just going to slice down there at the stem and peel off that brown skin. Pop that to one side, but I've still got a little bit of the root on there and that's going to help me chop. So we've got lines here, so we can use the lines to help us um, And then cut in a couple of cuts and then hold it all together and then just all the way along to get some nice fine dice. Obviously, if, you know, if you like it chunky, then um, do chunky pieces. Right, so I'm going to put that into um, the pan out of the way, but I'm not going to put the heat on until I've got everything ready, then, you know, it just um, doesn't burn. So then I'm going to use some garlic. So this bit of the garlic is called a bulb. Then obviously when you open it, you've got the cloves, which are covered in pink. So um, some of you use garlic powder or garlic granules, but the fresh is a lot better. You know, it's got more flavour and it's also very good for you. So you remove the skin and then you can use the big bit of your knife there and press down to crush it, because in crushing it, that releases all the um, flavours. Doesn't that make it easier to chop? It does actually. It releases the flavours, but then you're right, it's much easier to chop. One of the easiest ways of cutting around the pepper is to go all the way around the edge. So you could put two peppers in if you want, but you know, one is adequate really for this amount. Obviously if you don't like it, leave it out. Right, so I'm going to take my wok here with the onion and I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil get the onions started. Does anybody know why we might add the garlic at a later point? Because then all the flavouring like creases like into it. Yeah, that's a good reason and also that's a lot smaller isn't it than the yeah. onion. So it's going to um, burn if we put it in at the same time. So pop that in and give that a stir. Yeah, so we're sautéing the onion. So sautéing is just getting it soft really. If you don't want it brown, you don't want it black obviously. When it starts to get nice and soft like that, you can add the peppers and any other vegetables that you might be using. This is on quite a high heat at the moment. 
So we have got um, some tomatoes in the tin. Um, obviously they come chopped or sometimes big plum pieces that you need to chop yourself. Um, I've got um, an, an economy version of those, you know, equally fine, you know, it's a good product, cost effective meal then. You could use fresh tomatoes if you want to. Mix the tomato in and then at this point you would add the chilli flakes. Now if you were using fresh chilli you could put them in before the tomato so they're cooking a little bit with the onions and the peppers and everything but if you're cooking for people and they like different degrees of spice if you're using the chilli flake you can add a little bit more. Okay so that sauce is simmering away there and then we're going to add our um, protein into that. So the mince that we're using today is um, a supermarket um, meat-free mince made out of soya. So soya comes from beans like this. These beans would then be cooked and then processed to make um, a curd. So you'd make um, a flat cake of um, soya called tofu. And this would be used a lot in Chinese cookery and um, Southeast Asian type food. I don't know if people have come across it when they've been to Definitely. Chinese restaurants. I absolutely love tofu, so it's a great, a great product. So I'll pop some of this in and you can have a look at the packet. Okay, you just probably need about a quarter of the packet um, in this recipe. And that just needs to cook into the dish. Okay, and add more liquid. And you could, to provide extra richness, put a little bit of tomato puree as well. So that's coming together quite well. And then we have another kind of bean to add in. We've got the kidney bean. So the kidney beans are red. Got some here. Um, kidney beans, you can buy them dried and soak them and cook them yourself, making sure that they're um, cooked correctly. You have to boil them for 10 minutes. Um, before you simmer them or you know they're quite easy to buy in tins and you've got tins like this or you know you've got your economy version in a supermarket so what I've done here because the beans have been sitting in the tin in kind of a watery brine so I've rinsed them off so that you know they're all um, clean to go Did in you there. put lentils in instead of kidney beans as well? Yeah yeah you could actually the lentils would go really really well instead of the um, soy mints so we've got things like the kidney beans, the butter beans, the cannellini beans, flagellate beans, chickpeas. So that's coming along quite nicely. Obviously this is quite a big portion here. This would feed a family, um, you know, of about four or five. So if you were making it at home, you could freeze some or use it um, the next day for lunches. It'd be nice with a jacket potato. So to add something green, a little bit of iron, we might um, garnish the dish with some fresh parsley. Fresh herbs are really, really nice to add to dishes and um, they need to be added near the end. Often you see in restaurants, don't you, that people will garnish the dishes at the end before they bring them out. So it's really nice to um, have some chopped parsley or some other herb as a garnish at the end. Right, so that's almost ready for us to taste. You'll have noticed that I didn't actually add any salt.